Before I get started, I do consulting on where you can move. I'll work with you to find the perfect place for you to move to. There's more information at the end of the video about that. Now let's get started. Every time a billionaire spends a thousand dollars, that's like you spending a dollar. So that last minute pair of shoes you threw in your cart at Target, that would be like a billionaire dropping 50K on a last minute brand new car. You know, just to have it, couldn't resist. It'll probably get used one day. That's how things are in a place like this. I don't know if the people who live here are nice or where they came from, but I know they have lots and lots of money. I opened up my wallet and I found a new toy. This is a material island and I'm a material boy. Welcome to Palm Beach, Florida, the playground of the rich and the elite. Paradise Island, the Gold Coast, whatever you call it, this community is really just a narrow stretch of land off the coast of Florida. Across the bridge is West Palm Beach. It's just a short drive north of Miami, Palm Beach is. There are just over 8,000 residents in Palm Beach, although many don't live here year round. Most of them are millionaires of some sort. You can't afford it. Right now we're driving around the island's north end, which is generally considered to be the most exclusive part of Palm Beach, although there are some exceptions. We're going to drive around Palm Beach for a bit, and we're going to ooh and ah at the giant homes and the amenities here, and talk about these people and who they are and what the hell they do for a living. I've been to a lot of fancy areas in my day, and I don't think I've seen a place that's quite like it. I wish we could see beyond these hedges, but of course that's the point to wall themselves off from the rest of us. As we drive around, we'll catch glimpses of the opulence here. I did my best to capture the essence of the place while being surrounded by walls and walls of greenery. Clearly, these people have had success in whatever venture they pursued. The average cost of a home here is more than $2 million. Technically, that makes Palm Beach the fourth most expensive zip code in the United States. And even though these average houses we're looking at right now were worth about two or three million bucks, there are mansions here worth more than 50 million. One sold for 125 million not too long ago. Must be nice, right? It's really neat here, huh? It's like this every street you turn down on the north end of Palm Beach. Miles and miles of this. Oddly, or not, every street kind of looks the same. It's an endless labyrinth of perfect hedges and tile. Everywhere you turn in this place, it just screams money. All over are gated mansions, elite clubs, high-end shopping, equestrian grounds, polo grounds, yachts, sports cars, you name it, they have it. And for a lot of people here, this is just their second home. A lot of the houses we're looking at right now are locked up for the summer, hurricane shutters and all. Not everyone here is loaded. At the south end of the island are condos that cost as little as $359,000. Those people aren't mega millionaires. They make up about half of the island's population. But still, even with the regular condo people in town, the average income for households here is about $314,000 a year. That's the 18th highest income of all U.S. communities. The richest community in the country is a little place with a bunch of tech nerds near San Francisco called Atherton, where the average family brings in about $525,324.51 every year. And also, quickly for perspective, this is what it looks like across the bridge from Palm Beach over in West Palm Beach. Just lots of regular folks yucking it up just a couple miles from here. Over here in Palm Beach, it's very competitive. Everybody wants to make the most money. They want to know where they are on the wealthy scale. At last check, there was a collective net worth of $61 billion on this island, and you can bet that goes up every day. Over time, many celebrities have made Palm Beach their home. Bill Gates, Jimmy Buffett, Vanilla Ice, LOL. The wealthiest person here is currently a woman named Julia Koch, who is the widow of a guy named David, who owns a bunch of companies you've probably never heard of. But they're big companies. Most of the billionaires who live here are investors you haven't ever heard of before. Anyways, the United States is home to about 600 billionaires. 
and 12 of them live here on this little island. Palm Beach likes to call itself the first gated community in the country. It's not gated gated, but it's kind of gated. I mean, you could come here and drive around and shop if you wanted to, although I highly doubt you could afford to. It's the exclusive clubs and even some of the beaches here that are off limits to the rest of us. First, there's Mar-a-Lago. I'm sure that's one you've heard of. That's where our former president lives. I drove by here and didn't expect to get close to it. Most of it's surrounded by a six-foot wall, and the most obvious gate into the place has a guy with a machine gun outside. Mar-a-Lago is a 58-room mansion with features you can't even imagine. Other rich people lived here until Trump bought it and moved in in 1986. He turned it into a social club, but only really, 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 really rich people could become part of it. While he was in office, this was the Winter White House. He's still here from time to time, and I hear he's not happy the whole place doesn't have to shut down anymore when he pops in like it did when he was in office. There's a whole bunch of elite type stuff here. Tennis clubs, spas, resorts, thousand dollar a night hotels, and four golf clubs. This is Breakers. It's really fancy. I thought I'd try to drive in, but I was turned away. Though I should add that if I really wanted to get in, I would have. I mean, I've snuck into the locker room at a UNC basketball game and we tried on Roy Williams championship rings. Come on now, if I want to get into a place, I'll get in. I just wanted to drive around and look at stuff anyways. The golf courses here are so exclusive that you can't even really see them from the road. Behind those hedges, folks sip Arnold Palmer's and complain about their portfolios. They certainly don't have time for people like you and me out here. It's hard to get into the clubs here, and they make it hard to get to the beach, too. On this stretch of beach, no shit, you have to climb a wall to get over and get down to the sand. The rich people have their own pathways, but you're not rich, so you have to climb. The beach itself really isn't all that, at least the stretch of beach I saw near the middle of the island. The water here is a really pretty shade of blue, the typical shallow, waveless beach water you see up and down the state. Of course, it's really nice to look at, but it's not as pristine as the other beaches I've seen in Florida. And if you've been paying attention, I've seen a lot of Florida beaches, people. There's just no signs of life here, though. No seagulls, no small fish along the shore. It's devoid of animal life, actually. It's really weird. Along the coast, the homes are much easier to see, and they're also much fancier. This is Ocean Boulevard. This is what they call Billionaire's Row. Remember all the billionaires I talked about earlier? Many of them are here, along the Atlantic Ocean. Today, there's 12 billionaires that own a home here, and there's only 8,776 people here, so one in every 731 people here is a billionaire. Palm Beach has always had a lot of billionaires. It ranks first in the country per capita for billionaires. I mean, forever now, this was a sleepy place for the rich to hang their hats. But today, more billionaires are moving here. Florida opened itself up during COVID and the rich came pouring in. A lot of the newcomers here aren't the traditional old white guy. There's been so many new young finance geeks that have made their way to this island that some people say they should call it South Hamptons or even Wall Street South. I bet there's a lot of fancy parties being thrown in these pads, huh? I bet all these people have butlers and maids and cooks and personal trainers. They can probably summon a helicopter. They may even have lawyers in their guest homes. I wonder if they share Netflix passwords like I do. <laughs> That's a pretty good question, Mappy. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Anything to save a buck, right? Wait, where are you? I saw a door open, so I went in. Mappy, you can't do that. They probably have security. Actually, it's probably just their winter home, so there's probably nobody there. I would never live here. I don't like being around people that are better than me. Karen, you're extra. Actually, you're both extra. Extra. Right now, we're going to go down the main drag on Palm Beach Island. This is Worth Avenue. It runs kind of east and west in the middle of the island. It's pretty much the Rodeo Drive of Florida. This is where the Palm Beach people do their shopping and dining. There's no Bucci here, I'll tell you that, mister. Think of every single fancy brand name shopping outlet you've ever heard of, and you can bet it's here. Chanel, Gucci, Louis, all that. But it's not just the household name elite shopping here. 
There's boutique, boutique places that you've never heard of before. Places that only really rich, snobby people know about. Look at these stores. So I looked at their website. Worth Avenue has its own website. It's called worth-avenue.com. Here's the page that lists all the fancy stores. Acris, Bottega Veneta, Chanel, Gucci, Casaltis, Villebriquin. I can't even pronounce all the names of these fancy stores. This Villebriquin place sells $300 swimsuits. Okay, that's not that much. I thought they'd be like $2,000 or something. Palm Beach was just a swampy island for a long, long time. Then in 1878, a ship with a bunch of coconuts on board crashed here. And people were like, hmm, we should build something here. Well, 10 years later, some old oil man finally did. He stuck in a big hotel and it just grew from there. So, yep, 100 years ago, this street was an alligator farm and it was called Jungle Trail. No joke. But Palm Beach has come a long way since it was just mud and muck. Swamps by nature are always changing. They're unpredictable. Today, this place is just about as organized and uniform as it gets. Ka-ching. The next day, 30 minutes to the west, and still within Palm Beach County, I saw some really messed up stuff. It really put into perspective the huge divide between the elite and the destitute. But if you live in Palm Beach and you're watching this right now, you probably don't want to watch the next video in this series. I'm sure you have more important things to do. Well, let's, let's talk about um, Palm Beach for a little bit. Um, sure. You've lived there for a really long time. Give people an idea on how things have changed there in the last 20 or so years. Oh, my gosh. It, it's changed uh, considerably, and yet it hasn't changed at all. Um, it's, it's seven miles, really, from the, the very premier part of Palm Beach north, from Mar Lago north. That's really, really... Um, the best part of the island. And uh, I mean, I can tell you that the real estate prices have changed considerably. Um, I, I was just telling the assistant when I first moved here and something was say $5 million, which would be a magnificent estate is probably now $25 million. So that, that has changed significantly the cost per square foot. Um, but the same amount of property is still there. What, what changes every year is the uh, shops on Worth Avenue. You know, you have some landmark shops that are there year after year, and then you have a whole slew that close and new places open up. And then you have your Louis Vuitton was popular, and now it might be the Chanel store, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. that sort of stuff, um, which is, you know, pretty different. But um, the the gist of Worth Avenue is that's like the cent the central part of Palm Beach. So everything from there, everything when you're whenever you're on the island, everything gets uh, referred to as north of Worth Avenue, south of Worth Avenue. Um, you know, it's really it's really three blocks, 100, 200, 300 as far as the addresses go. So it, it's pretty easy to get the lay of the land uh, when you get there. It's kind of difficult to get lost. So um yeah so i hear it's growing there um it's an island can it really grow much more or is it just condos that are going in that that the growth is happening it really or? it really can't grow anymore i mean what, what we're, we're experiencing right now is a lot of the older homes are getting bought tore down and bigger bigger mansions are being built um there's been a couple of occasions where um some Vacant land has been op optimized for condos, new condo uh, towers or whatever. Um, but they're, again, on Flagler, which is across the street from the island. So that's, um, that's interesting. And then they, they pre-construction started like $10 million for a one-bedroom box. So it, it never ceases to amaze me when I look at the new listings, you know, how big something is. And then it's, uh, you know like the size of a walk-in closet, <laughs> if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's very beautiful there. Um, you know, it's almost, you know, too perfect when you're driving around and everything's in its place. And, you know, you, you start to wonder who lives here. Is it like business owners, uh, professional? I know that there's celebrities that live there, but would most of the islands on the North end be, just 
super uh, wealthy people? Super, super wealthy people. Um, I don't know if when you visited that you noticed we have this newspaper called the Palm Beach Daily News, and it's fondly referred to as the shiny sheet. Um, when I first moved here, you know, it's literally four to six pages long a day. And it's the who's who at what charity function, you know, sometimes it's the same names and sometimes it's not. And then you see the same names duplicated again, uh, you know, uh, donors for the Kravis Center, which is our big theater. Um, so it's it's names you might recognize. And then sometimes they'll just be a one liner blurb, you know, CEO of IBM or, you know, Howard Stern or whatever the case might be. But um, it. It, there's there is so much who's who so again like possibly you would hear a, a reference in new york or or possibly beverly hills old money new money uh, gets referenced quite a bit so how, so it, it's a pretty big deal how many generations of kids and grandkids now live on the island buy on the island you know um it's it's amazing to me it really is but it's also it's kind of like pop history so I, it, it never gets tired. I mean, I, to this day, and you can call it what you want, because I've always been a bit of an entertainment junkie. I haven't grown up in part of Southern California where there was always a lot of celebrity activity um, in Palm Springs, California. Um, who's who, who's in town? Um, you might just see, a, you know, a Bentley Rolls Royce closed, uh, you know, sacks for the day because uh, Celine Dion was going shopping or, John Travolta, you know, uh, was walking down the street, literally like, you know, um, and um, I always liken it because when I first moved here, I ended up working at Martha Godfrey, which was one of the old, old boutique firms. Martha Godfrey was right next door to a very famous restaurant, Taboo. And so we'd sit floor time a couple hours at a time. And some of the dogs were better dressed than some of the people. I mean, the diamond encrusted collars and there's there's little um, there's personalized little um, water troughs for the dogs that up and down Worth Worth Avenue and, and you know they're wearing an authentically diamond collar you know and the big outing for the day was should we take the Bentley or should we take the Rolls you know it's just um, and then I remember one day uh, one of my coworkers who, who had been around for a while so knew the island. And she asked me, because parking is a challenge on Worth Avenue when, you know, when it's high season. Um, oh, my husband's going to swing by and drop off a check. And I said, okay, well, he doesn't have to park. I'll go run out and meet him. And I go, what is he driving? She goes, he's driving a Rolls Royce. And I said, what color? <laughs> it's Rolls silver. Yeah, yeah, okay, which silver Rolls Royce, right? Yeah. There's like six so that's kind of That's kind of like, uh, you know, just an idiotic way of life down there um but you you either love it or you hate it i mean i just just to drive to work every day and go over that bridge and they it's paradise i mean it just it's you feel safe um we used to say the police are like the, the concierge um because if you're a car that you know nobody's seen before that you know you're already being watched you know make sure that you're supposed to be where you know you're supposed to be there <laughs> I'm sure I was being watched. I mean, I was driving around in circles with a camera in a I, uh, I don't doubt model uh, Jeep J Grand Cherokee. So I'm sure that I, I, I stood out pretty, pretty much. You were uh, probably immediately identified as, you know, a non-resident. <laughs> yeah, it's either, uh, you know, tourist guy or YouTube guy. One of the two is driving <laughs> yeah. around in circles. Yeah, definitely. And for a lot of these homes, it's like their second homes for people, right? I mean, second and third kind of yeah, I had I had a client who lived um, who lived down there, and she had her she belonged to the Polo Club in Wellington, and so she had her her membership booklet. You know, um, this is all very interesting to non wealthy people. So this, these are why these are details that I've, I've remembered through the, throughout the years. But so you look at the membership, um, you know, uh, little directory or whatever, and people's first house was you know. Um, Manhattan and the second house is Ocean Avenue, Worth Avenue. And then there was the, the Paris address or the London address. And I'm and you just look at it and you're like, what, what's that like? You know, it's just like, it's just, and these are like premier streets, premier addresses. And um, yeah. So, I mean, unless you 
socialized down there 24 seven, you, you can be removed from it. So when I, when I didn't live there, you know, it's nice to get invited or go to one of the functions or the fundraisers and, and to see how beautiful the breakers is at the holidays or any of those other, but if you don't, if you're not living there and socializing and part of this committee or that committee, you know, you're, you're, you're removed, you're removed, you know, removed, like you're, you're the have and the have nots. You either have it or you do not have it. <laughs> I certainly do not have it. Um, it would be nice to be able to schmooze with some of these people just to kind of see what it's like when you do do that, when you mm -hmm. kind of get invited to functions and you're in a room where there's like, 30 millionaires and two billionaires and are, are they nice? Are they, are, yeah, they, are they I mean, engaged? I say, for the most part, people are generally very nice. I, I, I found uh, on an overall opinion, just my personal opinion is they're very bored. They love an audience. They love if you would come for lunch, they love if you'd stop over and, and stay and have lunch or, or have, Oh, it's almost happy hour. Have, let's have a drink. You know, there's, they have all these beautiful appointments in these homes and their pools and their lanai's and and um but everybody does who lives there so they love an audience um you know even even to us mere mortals you know just to you know so i i've all, i mean i've always had the personality when i could get along with the maid you know or the butler or the millionaire um but you know, when you notice something is beautiful or obviously there's very expensive painting on the wall or, you know, it, it's it's pretty amazing to see that that's somebody's personal collection or, you know, they have these these random uh, um, displays when you just walk in and you, you, then you realize that there's like, you know, thousands of dollars of fresh orchids at every every side table. And you're like, wow, that's pretty amazing. You know, mm hmm. How much money would I have to make if I was going to buy the average Palm Beach home a year, you think? I know I'm putting wow. you on the spot math-wise, but... Um, How much money would you have to make? No, it's more of a question of um, are you paying cash or are you going to mortgage part of it? I mean, I mean, I have driven around country clubs and I've driven around Palm Beach. The difference when you drive around a, a very nice country club is you, you're like, where do these people get their money? Are they all doctors? Are they all lawyers? Are they all millionaires? But in Palm Beach, it's like, I wonder what they invented. Like, I wonder, you know, I wonder how many generations the family's wealth goes back. So there's really even a separation of wealth and extreme wealth. So, I mean, I, I have often said, you know, it would be probably an unrealistic dream to say I'd love just the smallest little house up on the north end with a little private pool in the back and just, you know, three bedrooms, two baths, just nothing fancy, but there um, for all those reasons, you know. Um, and then you have like, you know, a lot of single friends of mine, you know, let's go, ha let's go have a drink for happy hour. Oh, let's go to Palm Beach. And I'm like, well, we have a half hour drive. So do you want to have one drink and just go look at the rich people? Or do you want to, you know, do you, do you want to go out and have fun? <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. kind of ironic, but there's some, there's some places and, um, that I'm not going to say you couldn't afford, but, you know, you would probably, you know, you start with price range. Well, I used to keep, and I'm really old school because I've been in the business a long time, but I used to keep a three ring binders when I would sit on floor time. So it was my turn in case a millionaire walked in and wanted to buy a house. And I had it uh, tabulated by one to five million, five to 10 million, 10 to, so how much house could you afford as a regular Joe? You would probably be the under a million, you know, um, or definitely not even a house it would be a condo, you know, um, and there's your difference. So. Yeah. The condos are well, like, like 400, 500 grand. I mean, right. They're not like, Oh my God. I, I mean, I, I, I think the average person could live on Palm beach if they had a little condo. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And a lot of people, a lot of people do, I mean, prefer to live there, but you, you would have, you know, you're, you're definitely going to compromise. I mean, even when you buy a house anywhere, there's always a compromise. Do I have a laundry room? Do I have that extra half bath down there? It's like, do I need it? Do I need another bedroom? <laughs> you know, can I can afford the studio, but do I want an actual bedroom? And then, and then you're, then you're in the five to, to $700,000 range for one or, you know, studio or one bedroom. But um, okay. So it, you could, you could spend 450 and get a studio. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, Hey, if I was 23, and I had uh, half a million dollars. It wouldn't be su such a bad life to have a studio on Palm Beach. Yeah, it's 
One of the things I just uh, just recall when you asked me earlier is what changed down there. They they had no, I want to say maybe ten years ago they finally renovated their grocery store, their you know the Publix grocery store. Mm-hmm. It was one of the oldest grocery stores because um, now we have these super mega stores and you know you can get everything that Whole Foods and you know everybody has. But the the store was so old. Now it has you know valet and it's it's like it's like um, and the and the items that they carry on a regular basis like the caviars and the you know all the rare foods and meats and wagyu beefs and all that is interesting as opposed to yours or mine's corner store <laughs> so the grocery store has valet parking and sells caviar yes yes definitely does so besides uh shopping sitting on the beach or um, playing golf um, and some of the elite clubs. That's pretty much all there is to do there, right? I mean, you socialize, you sit on the beach, or you shop. Right. I I remember working one day. Um, there was another agent in my office, a top producer, which, you know, isn't, isn't an unusual thing down there. You have your handful of agents that make the majority of the deals, and he – he never leaves the island. I, I remember he had a, a small uh, daughter and she needed, I don't know, socks for camp or something. And he was going to go to the children's store on Worth Avenue, you know, to buy socks for camp. And I, I was like, but if you just go over the bridge, you know, there's a, you know, there's a target. Or yeah, a you could spend like $20 for socks, not $100 for socks. Yeah. And he goes, you know, it, it was really, it was serious conversation. Oh, I, I won't leave the island. I'm not going to yeah. go shot off the yeah. island. And the camp was on the island. And, the, you know, it's just like, so, the, and there you go, your next generation of of uh, rooming, I guess you could call it. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, so, so some things change and, and then almost nothing changes. So, Are the clubs, is it just a matter of money to join the clubs? I mean, I, they're very exclusive, but it's just a matter of if you can pay the annual fee, then you can you can join yeah i mean it's like anything else one country club will tell you they have better golf the other country club will tell you well they have a better you know spa it's um it depends on who you are who you know and what you can afford um it it i I don't think i've ever i don't think i've ever figured it out in the, the 20 plus years i've lived here which is the better club you know uh to be a be long a member to um the, it, yeah. it, these are all those unspoken rules of what's better than who's got the best, you know, location, uh, you know, yeah. some fall from grace. If there's a scandal, you know, if there's a scandal on the island and like, you know, there was a max ex- exodus of, of charity functions at, at Mar-a-Lago when everything was, you know, so divided with, with, you know, who's who and what's what. And that, that was kind of interesting because, you know, they, you know, you, you want to hold that event at the best place, and then if, if, if and then if the buzz around town is oh well that's no longer the best place, and then you see these people scrambling <laughs> where they're gonna where they're gonna buy their five hundred dollar a plate dinner for their you know function. It's interesting. But, Being a moderately successful YouTube personality, do you think that I would uh, be able to get a tea time at one of those country clubs there? I think you would have a better chance if you were an invited guest okay. and you impressed the right person at that game. Um, I, I mean, I, my husband I would not impress anybody at, at a game of golf. That, that would not happen. Now, if we played something else, um, horseshoes, you know, I, I might be able to impress some people, but my golf game is, is not very impressive. Sometimes you, you get some of these wealthy uh, women or men, I'll, I'll say women, for instance, that, um, you know, it's almost like you would be un- unofficially sponsored. Like this is Nick. I want you to Nick. I want you to meet. You know, and then and then they would like sponsor your popularity, if you will. And yeah. then you could be in like Flynn, or it's just fodder for the next day's shiny sheet. You know, uh, gossip. Guess so. who's on the island? Nick Johnson from YouTube. Who? Yeah, who? yeah. We what? got a YouTube artist, and uh, he? he's down here. Yeah, why was why, why, who's that? Why was he here? Right, I never heard of him. Um, yeah, speaking of Mar-a-Lago, so what is it like when 
before, like when Trump was president and he would come to Mar-a-Lago, um, I hear it was like bonkers with traffic and you know, all the the regular folks who didn't live um, that close. We were all um, we were all compromised by trying to just even get onto the island or off the island or when he was in residence and then the airspace was blocked off. And then there was complaints from from literally both sides, if you will, that um, our police were paying for his, you know, security. And every time he goes back and forth to play golf, you know, we're we're on, you know, we're being uh, forced to pay for all this extra security, and, and no other president has ever, you know, and because it's such a unique island, and you've been there, and you could see there's only three bridges, you know. And obviously, the bridge that needs to get to where you need to go, you bypass a good 20, 30 minute drive on a good day without a president, you know, um, being sitting president being on the island. So that was kind of interesting, um, you know, events. And, and uh, again, it went back to the charities and when people weren't agreeing on politics and then charities were getting canceled. And I, I'm sure there was a lot of decisions made, not just on the golf course at that time, but you know, <laughs> in some of the uh, restaurants for lunch about where something was going to be held, you know, it was, it's, it was, just, it, you really just can't even make it up because that's really how, how it goes down there, you know, so. Yeah, I, I've certainly, I, you know, I've been to a lot of places and I have not been to a place as unique as, as Palm Beach, Florida. And, and I'm glad. And, I got and it's so it. beautiful. I mean, uh, from a realtor's perspective, when I, finally got the lay of the land and I take, I wanted to show you that I have this, we have this, this is like free from the chamber. It's, it's the map of the Island. It's really seven miles. And um, when you were taking somebody new to the area, it really, it's like you were, you're like a tour guide basically. I mean, there's no guarantee that somebody's going to buy a house no matter where it is, but when you get there and, and always, you know, and at the time, like hardly anybody gets in my car these days anymore, but, you know, you pick them up or you meet the office, they get in your car and, like, and who lives here? Oh, well, that was Rod Stewart's house and that's Estee Lauder's house. And that's, you know, um, and, and so that was always kind of cool uh, to tell people. And they they were as amazed always as I was when I first got here and started to learn the lay of the land. Um, and so I would take a certain route, you know, if I had first timers, you know, in my car. So that, and I mean, what's not to love about that? I mean, you know what I mean? What's not to love? I mean, I do love what I do, generally speaking, and I've been in three states. So I've, I've been in some pretty nice areas where there's some pretty nice real estate, but um, it just never gets boring. You know, it never gets boring. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great you should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.